part of my quest to actually make your lives more interesting instead of fearful. I've got this, you'll enjoy this one, but before I get to it, yeah, I'm glad you're enjoying my book recommendations. I got two today. The first one is Nature's Silent Music by Philip S. Callahan. Now, Philip S. Callahan was an American military engineer who was in Ireland uh, during the Second World War, based in Northern Ireland, and he was in instrumental in developing the communication systems that allowed the D-Day and Normandy operations to happen. When D-Day happened he had nothing to do so he spent the rest of the time traveling around Ireland with his friend examining ancient sites and came to the conclusion that both the ancient megaliths of Ireland and the round towers of Ireland are both possessing of our collectors of, and possessing of something called diamagnetic electricity which uh, was primarily used to condition and make the soil around them much better. Uh, the book is very good, although I would not agree with his theories on the the origin of the Round Towers, but he was just going by the thing. But he was just a guy who went around Ireland, fell in love with the country, and being a scientist wrote a very, very re readable and very, very good book. He also talked about places in Tibet and other places, not just in Ireland. Highly recommended if you're interested in megaliths in terms of the properties uh, that they can possess that was made may um make make may is the reason that they were built though philip s callahan's nature silent music the other book and it's germane to this video is celestial secrets the hidden secrets of the fatima incident by uh jacquim fernandez and fina de amad actually i think it's it, it's jackie i'm not Joaquim. it's uh, portuguese it's pronounced differently the j is pronounced as a j i think so rather than uh, like a, a yw the way it's pronounced in spanish but this is what we're going to, i'm not going to talk about this book in this video but this book is recommended because it shows that the fatima incident was nothing like what the jesuits reimagined it uh, many years later in the 1940s when they when they recruited Hollywood and everything to retell the story completely fictional an entity was that about 18 inches high showed up it made an electronic clicking noises if you look at my video I'll put the link below to uh, cinch the Sintra code I, t I talk about the incident in there and uh, now a friend of mine from Portugal did bring this bring one aspect of this story up but I think the other side of it is mine and i haven't seen anyone talk about this to date so i'm taking credit for it completely i can't believe that no one has not noticed it yet but what do the marian apparitions now the, the the real ones of europe all have in common and what do they all have in common firstly as my friend discovered in fatima they're all in areas of complex cave structures that's the first one that's uh Medi Medjugorje in Bosnia and Herzegovina, Lourdes in southern France, Fatima in Portugal, and, and Garabandal in northern Spain in the 1960s. A very spooky one. That's, that's the first link. That's an important one because it's also relevant to the second link. The second link is that all these apparitions of the so called Virgin Mary all took place in areas once controlled by Muslims. Fatima is even named after Muhammad's mother. In fact, in the 1990s, uh, Iranians uh, were traveling to Fatima in Portugal, believing it was a historic center, that there was a, 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 a supposed site, sighting of the, the, the Fatima in the town. So the thing they have in common is they're all in Muslim areas, were formerly long-term Muslim areas, as I mentioned, the one in Spain, Bosnia Herzegovina, Portugal, southern France, all Muslim-controlled areas. Second factor: all cave systems. What were they? The jinn. What do this is the Muslims believe the jinn is primarily lives in caves and dark places. So that's what it was. The this is also would explain why the Virgin Mary is held in such high esteem among the Muslims, among particularly among the Turks. Uh, this is all. This is this is what we're dealing with here. Now, what happened at Fatima, as you can see, was that basically the kids saw this 18-inch being that made a, an electronic clicking noise. That's very common with like demons and other entities. If you've read into demonology, 
uh, the two of them died, Fernanda, Fernando and the, the other girl's name, and Luc Lucia was sent to a convent for the rest of her life. So it was like, kill two of the kids and send the other one to a convent to play this whole bullshit uh, Secrets of Fatima crap. Now the other one was, uh, the others are all similar kind of stories. They all have these same things in common that what the, the, the nearly always, anyone who sees them nearly always dies or has a horrible life. I think the ones in Spain got off easy because we're entering a more modern time and that happened. They saw it in the 60s. But they were also pushing the apocalyptic thing as well. And this was the whole thing. It's, it's been captured by the by the, the Jesuits and rebuilt Brandon into something it's not. So there you go. I'm going to put my, my ass on the line here again and say that these Marian, Marian apparitions are actually uh, jinns. And the reason why is because they developed or they cultivated or they manifested during the Islamic reign, reign of these places. Now on Ireland just at the road here we're supposed to have a, a, a vision of the Virgin Mary in the 1870s. But it was ridiculous. It was the Virgin Mary, St. John, Elvis and Abbott and Costello practically appeared on the side of a wall. Almost certainly it was a magic lantern that someone had uh, nearby to fool the local yahoos and that's what that was. Uh, there's a very good work done on that. Someone was like, someone was messing with the, the locals by putting, projecting magic lantern onto the side of the church. And the other one with Bally Spittle down in the 1980s, the church where the statues were moving of the Virgin Mary, there was no apparition there. And, but that's also interesting, that place, and it was never, obviously, well, Ireland was never captured by Muslims, although we were raided in Cork. And this is interesting, it's on the southern tip of Ireland in a place that was constantly raided by Islamic pirates, the Berbers. And uh, including whole towns like Baltimore, which was like whipped up one night and all that were all taken off. The whole population was removed one night by Muslim, Muslim pirates. So there could be even an, an interesting element there with Bally Spittle in Cork. Uh, because it is caves and there is, you know, there, although it was never controlled by Muslims, it was an area terrorized by Muslims, Muslim pirates at one time. So there we go. I think we're dealing with jinns and I think there's a very good evidence for this.